Hey, welcome to today's broadcast. My name is Abidemi and uh, we're continuing our journey looking at hope and ex expectation of good, you know, from God. We started it yesterday and um, <clears throat> one of the things that we um, highlighted yesterday about this hope was the fact that um, ex our expectation can be for good or uh, for you can expect a bad thing or an evil thing to happen. Um, and that uh, <laughs> expectation of good, that is something desirable, something that is uh, of benefit, okay? That's, that expectation of good is what we call hope, especially when it is rooted in God, okay? That you're expecting a good God, okay? Who is always good all the time. Um, you're expecting something good from, from him because he has promised. So that's the hope we're talking about, okay? And one of the things that we, we mentioned yesterday was the fact that what you believe will either uh, give birth to your hope, nourish it, or it can actually kill your hope, all right? So we've got to be careful because it's what you believe that is going to happen because faith is, I mean, hope is futuristic, okay? So what you believe is going to happen is going to, uh, is what you are going to have hope for, right? So we also mentioned the fact that uh, hope is a doorway for good or for evil. A doorway for good things to happen in our lives, if it's uh, hope, that is good expectation, expectation of good, or uh, a doorway for bad things or evil things to actually happen in our lives. Um, okay, so... I just want to highlight that, you know, I want to start from there today. I want to highlight that uh, bit with a story from the Bible in Acts chapter 3, verses 1 to 8. Those of you who are familiar with that story, it's the story of the uh, lame man who, who um, ironically, was always placed at the uh, beautiful gate, the gate called Beautiful, to, um, to ask for arms of people who are going to the temple. Okay. You know, uh, there was a statement that I came about in, I think it was from uh, a brother, um, Jerry Savell. He said, uh, expectancy is the breeding ground for miracles. And I think this is really powerful. That is true, especially when your expect expectation is of uh, good, all right, when it is hope. You're, it's earnest, it's, it's, you're earnestly expecting something good. Then it creates an atmosphere for miracles to happen. You know, a miracle we know is a uh, divine intervention is in, in the natural course of things, natural course of events. So when God gets involved and uh, that natural course of events is changed, we call it a miracle. Okay. So expectancy or expectation is a breeding ground for miracles. And that is very important. Some of us, I mean, personally, I believe in miracles so many miracles in my life that I can't but believe in miracles. Some people don't, but I do because we serve a miracle working God, a powerful God who loves passionately and he won't hold back uh, from interfering in natural course of events just because of his love, just because he loves us, just because he's our father. So he won't hold back. So I... Uh, I believe in miracles and I've received many miracles. I expect miracles. I expect situations and circumstances to change. Those that are contrary to me, I expect them to change. When I get into the word of God and believe God and pray and ask God's intervention, um, that's what prayer is all about, <laughs> asking God to intervene in the affairs of man. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. So let's look at the story of this crippled man, okay? Like I said, it's in Acts chapter 3, and I'm going to read verses 1 to 8. It just um, powerfully brings out the fact that our expectation can be the doorway for good, for good things to happen to us. And also the fact that your expectation sometimes is too low, <laughs> okay? Sometimes people believe, um, okay, um, that God can... Um, <laughs> God can keep them, you know... On a certain level of work all right okay god who has made room for them you know maybe to get employed and enter into a company 
uh, they were they were they didn't have work for a while and then uh, by god's grace they got this job and they started maybe on the level of um a customer assistant or whatever meanwhile they were highly qualified now your expectation can be that oh, at least now you've got a job so that you're going to you know maintain this job you know you're going to you know be there and so on and so forth but your expectation can be upgraded when you know that god is the one that determines he rules in the affairs of man when you know that that god has promised that you'll be the head and not the tail you're hard working you're applying the principles of the of the scriptures your expectation can be upgraded to the fact that you can expect to become the top person in that in that place of work even though you started as um on the lower grade okay so let's just read the story one day peter and john were going up to the temple at the time of prayer okay so we see there you know powerful prayer <laughs> time of prayer is a time when we invite people to intervene in the affair of, of men at three in the afternoon in the in the um in that culture they have prayer hours you know um i think every three hours 12, 3, 6, 9, and so on and so forth. Now, a man was lame from birth. A man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful. What a contradiction. Lame from birth, being put at the temple gate called Beautiful, you know. But his story was about to change that day. <laughs> so let's go on. By the way, the title of <laughs> the sharing today is called Hope is a spiritual a powerful spiritual force that can change your life all right so let's carry on with this guy so he was was being carried to the gate to temple gate called beautiful where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts when he saw peter and john about to enter he asked them for money because that's what he expected. He expected that everybody going in, especially when they're going to serve God, they would have a compassionate heart. So um, they would be, you know, willing to give him some coins or whatever. So that's what he was expecting. So he asked them like he did every other person. So Peter looked straight at him as he as did John. So, But these guys were different. They looked straight at him, you know, to get his attention. It says, then Peter said, look at us. It was a command. You know, Peter commanded him to look at them. Okay, look at us, he said. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. So his expectation at that level was of silver and gold. All right, that was all he was expecting. That's all he's ever got from anybody. All right. And uh, so uh, um, <laughs> Peter and John were no different as far as he was concerned. But the way they commanded him to look at them, you know, they, they, they sort of stirred something in his heart. You know, stirred something that said was different from something he had before. The the expectation he, he he displayed before that he had before. The him. I mean, it's like you're you're asking somebody to give you some money, and they said, "Look at us." You know, it's as though, yeah, I'm seeing you. <laughs> What's up? What's up with you? Why are you commanding me to look at you? Then verse six says, "Then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you." In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Verse 7 says, taking him by the right hand, he helped him up. And instantly, the man's feet and ankles became strong. Hallelujah. I mean, as I was saying that your expression can be upgraded, right? <laughs> this guy's expectation for a few coins was upgraded by Peter, you know, getting his attention and saying, listen, guy, Look at us. We're different, kind of. He didn't say that, but it's a case of look at us. And the guy was wondering, but of course his gaze was fixed on them at that point. You know? And before he knew it, Peter was declaring that, look, what you are, silver and gold, we don't even have it. But we have something that you really need. We have something that will change your life. And at that point, I don't know whether the guy had time to think before Peter said, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And the Bible says that he grabbed a hold of his hand and he pulled him up and this guy began to walk. So his expectation that day was changed, uh, upgraded. And as a result of that, he got what he really needed. 40 years, the Bible says, he was born like that. And for 40 years, he's been at that gate. 
I mean, well, probably definitely not from birth, but at least his adult life, they've carried him there day in, day out to beg for arms. But that day, his expectation brought him the miracle. So that goes to prove the fact that, look, our expectation is a breeding ground for miracles. Look, let me tell you something. Some people, you know, do a religious exercise called prayer, you know. Um, you get involved in it simply because you're told to pray or you see other people praying and so on and so forth. Listen, if your praying is not because you are expecting God to answer you, then forget it, you're just wasting your time. It's just a religious exercise. But when your praying is based on the promise of God, the Bible says that they that come to him must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. When your praying is based on the fact that the Bible says that, look, Call upon me in your time of trouble. I will hear and I will deliver you. When you're praying, it's not just about a, a religious exercise. When the Bible says that, look, call upon me and I will show you, you know, great things that you don't even know about. When your expectation is based on the promises of God and is based on the faithfulness of God and you're expecting that God will answer you when you call, then you can be sure that that expectation would bring about a release of the, of the power of God in your situation like it did for this guy, you know, at the gate called Beautiful. So we see there, our expectation is a doorway for good things to happen in our lives as it can be the other way. So hope is a doorway. You know, I know we, among uh, evangelicals, we price, you know, all charismatics, kind of not just evangelicals. We we prize faith above hope. But you see, I'm going to see later on, without hope, you can't even have faith. <laughs> Amen. So hope is so foundational. You know, the Bible says that uh, the just shall live by faith. And without hope, your faith is not non-existent. So which means that the just <laughs> cannot live without hope. All right. So let's go on. Now, hope does not disappoint us. That's what the Bible says in Romans 5.5. 5. And let's see why, you know, that is the case. Romans 5 and verse 5. It says there, and hope does not put us to shame. It does not disappoint us. Okay, we know that disappointment is one of the uh, uh, ways that we lose, that we can lose our hope. All right. When we're disappointed, like we we're saying yesterday, when you're disappointed, it means that it affects you in such a way that, you know, uh, you're not expecting anything better next time. You know, it, it robs you of your hope. All right. But the Bible says here, hope that is earnest expectation of good from God does not disappoint us. It does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. All right. God's love is something that we can't change because God is love. We can never be out of it. We can't get out of it, all right? Um, because God would always be God. Even if you turn your back on him, he will still love you because that's who he is. His name is love. He, he is love, all right? He can't help himself but love you, all right? And this is why hope in God can never disappoint us because hope is covenant based all right it is based on the love of god and because of the covenant that god is a covenant keeper you know um just a quick intro. a covenant is an agreement between two parties okay they exchange uh, promises and uh, there are um, uh, consequences for uh, obeying the um, the terms okay and there are consequences for breaking the terms you know when it comes to covenants between god and man consequences for obeying the terms are what you call blessings consequences for breaking the terms are curses but we thank god because jesus came obeyed every single one of those uh, requirements and you know he became a curse for us so that we can enjoy the blessings of abraham so um when you are in christ jesus because of what jesus did and you have put your faith in him for your salvation your side of the issue is the blessing but like every other promise some of them there's still an if attached to it okay but in the case of hope 
The reason hope does not disappoint us because it's, in, it's based on God's love and it's based on God's covenant promises. All right. An expectation of good from God. Like the Bible says in Psalm 23, you know, surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. So you wake up every single day expecting the goodness of God to follow you, expecting the mercy of God to follow you. The Bible says that, you know, uh, the mercies of God are brand new every single day. So even if you messed up yesterday, when you wake up after you repent, right? And then you wake up this morning, you can be sure that the goodness of God will be there for you because it's brand new every single day. So when your hope is based on God, all right? then you can be sure that you will not be disappointed. You will not be disappointed. So hoping in God means that you cannot come to a place of hopelessness. Say that again. When your hope, earnest hope is in God, you cannot come to a place of hopelessness unless you take your eyes off of God. You take your eyes off of his word. You begin to listen to the enemy of our souls, you begin to listen and go by the circumstances and situations around you. That's the only time that you can lose hope. But once your eyes are on the Lord and your, his word, your eyes are in his word, you're meditating on it day and night, you can never come to the point of hopelessness because there's always tomorrow. There's always tomorrow. You can always expect goodness of the Lord and his mercy to follow you the following day. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 12. Hallelujah. Ephesians 2.12. It says, this is talking about, um, okay, let me take it from verse 11. It says, therefore, remember that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision, which is done in the body by human hands. Remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, right? Excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenant of the promise without hope and without God in the world. Because anyone who is not in Christ Jesus is excluded from the covenant of life and is without hope. Okay? All their life and everything is about this world, about the temporal. And the temporal is only a tiny little dot compared to eternity. So when we come into the covenant of God through Christ Jesus, that's when we have hope. That's when we, we acquire hope, earnest expectation of good from God. You know, people who don't know God, who don't know about his love, you know, they have these funny ideas about God, you know, lies that the enemy has pushed, you know, sometimes through the church that, you know, God is like a, a taskmaster up there just waiting for you to mess up and he's going to bang you on the head and all that kind of stuff. That's so different from the God who sent his son, his only begotten son. Gave him up for us. John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, that's the condition, whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. That's the God we're talking about. That when we come into the Lord Jesus Christ, we have hope. We have earnest expectation of good from our covenant father, our covenant keeping God. Hallelujah. Okay. Now, there's something else I want to, to talk about here. It says, hope is a powerful spiritual force. When you say something is powerful, it means something that has ability to uh, uh, influence actions that will bring a change all right uh, force is similar I mean, when you're uh, defining in terms of physics and all that stuff you know force is something that can initiate uh, a response you know when if the force comes against you it initiates a response because it pushes against you then you push back against it all right so hope is a powerful spiritual force and we know that uh, the spiritual is before the natural. The spiritual decides the natural, okay? Because we as human beings, we're taking up with all the natural stuff and so on and so forth, forgetting that primarily we're spirit beings, you know? The minute we wake up to the fact that 
happens. That's when we're actually beginning, we're beginning to live as God wants us to live. You know, that's when we actually begin to rule and to reign in life. When we wake up to the fact that the spiritual, you know, determines the physical, okay, or the natural. So hope is a powerful spiritual force and it affects all areas of our lives. That's the spiritual. The spiritual affects the natural in many ways, more ways than we can even imagine. More ways than we can imagine. Most of us, you know, like Christians, when we pray sometimes, <laughs> I remember there was once <laughs> somebody was asking me to pray about something, you know, and uh, oh, pray that this, pray that that, pray that that. And the way we were just saying is as though everything was just about the natural facts of what's happening that you're saying, okay, pray about this, pray for this, pray for that. And I just say, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. What about the root of all these problems that you're highlighting? Because you're, if you're dealing with every single one of these little things, you're just wasting your spiritual power, wasting your time, basically. Because unless you get to the root of it, which most times is in the realm of the spirit, if you don't get to the root of it, you're just dealing with the shoot. And as soon as you cut it down, the thing will grow up again. All right? <laughs> So we deal with issue from the spiritual force, from the spiritual realm. So hope is a spiritual force that affects a lot of things in the natural, in our lives. Okay. Uh, it affects our, obviously it affects our spirit man because it's born in our spirit. It's a spiritual force. It affects our souls, our minds, our wills and our emotion. Okay. It affects our physical body as well. You know, hope affects our physical body. When people are hopeless, you know, sometimes, you know, people, People, when they, they get healed or maybe they are recovering, you know, and something happens and makes them to lose hope. Once they lose hope, you can be sure that, you know, uh, their recovery will be stalled and they may not make it. OK, but hope keeps us alive. It affects our physical body. It affects our mind, our will and our emotion, our intellect. It affects everything about us. And this is why it is so powerful and so important. It affects our actions. You know, when you see somebody who is hopeful, somebody who is expecting something good to happen to them, you know, the way they act is different from somebody who is not. For instance, okay, let's take an example of a pregnant woman, for instance. You know, we usually say that uh, we call them expectant mother, all right? They are expectant moms, we call them. So an expectant mom, you know, you know her actions are different from somebody else who is not uh, expecting. An expectant mom knows that something is coming. That day is coming when they're going to behold the face of that child. So they are beginning, they start preparing. They start going to go and get, you know, baby products, start preparing, you know, you know, um, changing the house, preparing for the baby, and so on. That is hope. And this expectation of this day, because the child is meant to stay there for nine months, okay? And the expectation of the fact that this baby is coming out, man. The day is coming. I better get ready. So actions show whether you have hope or not. All right? Because hope affects our actions. Hope affects our actions. You know, for instance, also, hope affects our disposition. Somebody who is hopeful, for instance, the Bible says that, you know, um, like we read in Psalm 27, when we did that series, that uh, I would have fainted, I would have despaired, unless I believed, see the goodness of the Lord in this land of the living. That is active, pertinent, earnest hope. You believe, definitely see the goodness of the Lord in this land of the living, okay? And because of that, you are not in despair. You, you, you're not fainting. You, you, you still keep pressing on no matter what your situation is like no matter what's happening around you in your life or in the life of other people you know um so faith affects our disposition you're patient the bible says that you know those who have faith they are patient and then through faith and patience they will they will receive the promise patience is not some um powerless force when they say oh your patient doesn't mean it's not the same as passivity. Patience means remaining the same no matter how long it takes. And that's why it's important for our faith, which is rooted in our, uh, our hope, you know, to go along with patience 
so that we can inherit the promise. Okay, it affects our disposition. Another way that it affects our disposition is our joy. Okay? Somebody who is hopeful is joyful. Somebody who is hopeless is not joyful. You cannot see a hopeless person with a smile on their face. It's not possible. A hopeless person, the hopelessness will show in, their, in every part of them. The way they carry themselves, the way they speak, the way they look, the, 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 the appearance, the, the, whether they have joy or not, the hopelessness will show. In the same way, when somebody is hopeful, okay, when somebody is hopeful, it shows on their faces. It shows in every area and every aspect. It affects their disposition. You know, a hopeful person is, is joyful. You know, they, they've got the sprint on in their steps. You know, they are fully expecting that God will show up for them, irrespective of what's happening. They're expecting to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the, of the living, in this land of the living. They're not waiting till they get to heaven. <laughs> That's another religious thing <laughs> where all our expectation of good from God is, is, uh, is pushed to the future when we get to heaven. No, no, no. It's here. Abundant life is here. And we can expect to see the goodness of the Lord in this land of the living. That's what the Bible says. I'm not making it up. We're already saying Psalm 27. Hallelujah. Okay. So joy, our joy is affected, you know, by hope. Whether we have hope or not affects our joy. Oh, wow. Time is fully spent. Okay. Let me just read this Romans 12 verse, verse 12. And we'll stop here and carry on, carry on tomorrow. All right. Romans 12, 12. It says, be joyful in hope in affliction remember joy joyful in hope patient in affliction and faithful in prayer hope makes you joyful hope makes you patient it helps you to be patient in affliction because you know that it's not going to last because you expect to see the goodness of the lord in this land of the living hallelujah so i'm just going to round it up and stop it here and we'll carry on tomorrow if this has been a blessing, give it a thumbs up. All right? Share it. Let other people be blessed because we need hope in this hour, in this time. We need hope. There's a lot going on, you know, in their individual lives, in their nations, in, in the world. We need the hope that we can only get from God. And this week of hope, I'm believing God that hope will be stirred up in our hearts and we will share it with other people as well. Give people hope. Give people hope. There's somebody I know, you know, it's my husband actually. <laughs> he, he, he always gives people hope, no matter what they're going through, no matter the circumstance. Sometimes <laughs> when he gives some advice, I um, shudder a little bit because I, I tell him, how do you know that's going to happen? <laughs> but he's done it so many times and I've seen things happen so many times that I stopped doing that because I know he's it's, it's anointed to do that. Hope. Somebody can change their lives. So share this with somebody. Let them have hope, all right? Let them have hope, you know, and click the, uh, uh, the notification button as well so that when next, you know, I remember all through this week, this is a week of hope. Every day at four o'clock, I'm going to give you something about hope. Okay, if you're watching it on uh, YouTube, also thumbs up, like it, share, you know, click subscribe and the bell button. So that every time we upload any new video, you'll be aware of it and you can see it. Share it, share it, share it. All right. God bless you and thank you for watching. And uh, let me leave this with you. There is no situation that God cannot handle of the impossible. There's nothing that he cannot do. So put your trust in the Lord. Be hopeful in him today.